regard, because I hate talking on the phone. <laughs> As you can probably tell from my accent, um, I am from Sweden. <laughs> and I've had some interesting interactions when I've told people that. So, for example, one guy just went, well, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> I just thought you were from New Zealand. <laughs> Another guy asked me, where are you from? And when I said, Sweden, he said, did you mean Swindon? <laughs> <laughs> really helpful. Um, so uh, I've always loved to accessorise, uh, which is why as a child I wanted to have really bad vision. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> I can't. Um, so the thing about wearing glasses is that people think that you're like really intellectual, um, and I am. Um, for example, if I'm hanging out with someone who's got like a chest infection, I'll always go, how Kafka-esque. <laughs> so I think now is the perfect time for me to tell you guys about my imaginary vehicle. It's got these two wheels, right, and then this board in between with a pole that comes up with a handle on it. Um, now what I mainly like to use this for is just to go from one bit in my set to the next one. <laughs> Called it a segue. <laughs> so I have something called general anxiety disorder, or uh, GAD for short, as in, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Which coincidentally is something I like to say all the time because of it. Uh, the thing about having general anxiety disorder is it can be a bit confusing to people, so what just like everything makes you anxious, and it's like, yes. Um, but also, uh, I like to rationalise it for people by explaining that general anxiety disorder is just being really worried that you at any moment could be drafted and forced to lead a unit that is larger than a regiment or its equivalent, or several units from within different arms of the service. Um, but let's be honest, most likely, uh, probably just be a staff officer who doesn't actually go into battle, but rather plans field operations. <laughs> Still quite stressful. <laughs> so I recently came up with a way of monetizing my low self-esteem. Um, it's really simple. Uh, I've basically I've started my own business where I will come to your house and I'll talk about how useless I am. Um, but then I'll also bring these gorgeous little canapes. And I've decided to call it Caroline's self-deprecatoring. <laughs> it's got a tagline as well. It's she's the worst, <laughs> and she cooks a mean one. <laughs> Brackets burst. <laughs> uh, now I don't believe in God, um, but I do believe in life after love. <laughs> And uh, even though I'm not religious, uh, I was confirmed into the Swedish church. And to do this, I basically had to go for this two-week camp in the far north of Sweden. Um, I'm always worried I'm going to say the far right. <laughs> um, which, if you know Sweden, would be quite likely. Um, so um, I, I had to go to the far north of Sweden, right? And I went to this camp and about halfway through, um, I was all busy learning about Jesus and his friends. Um, and I get this phone call from my mom telling me that my um, grandmother has um, won tickets for a Twilight fan event in Stockholm. <laughs> um, so naturally, I have to answer to this higher calling. Um, so I get on the night train and I'm on my way down through Sweden. And uh, when I wake up, we're already at my stop. Uh, so I basically, I run to the door and I start frantically pushing the button um, and the doors do open, but they open on the side where like the rails are, which isn't supposed to happen because there can be like trains. <laughs> so I realised uh, what's happened is this must be a test from God because he famously <laughs> likes to test his children. <laughs> So what I do is I climb down and I actually, I do make it across. Um, I survive and in fact, I'm still alive today. <laughs> um, and 
yeah, that's the story of how I got railed by God. <laughs> <laughs>